Hello gorgeous people, you're listening to Kate Palmer from Sparkle Tart and today I'm going to show you a little product test colour palette page done with one of the Lindy's Stamp Gang monthly colour challenge sets. Now I wanted to make this a little bit more interesting so I'm starting by cutting out a wedge from a circle template. Now you could buy this but I just printed one out on the computer and I've just roughly cut it out with a craft knife. Now I'm going to be playing in my Dilutions Square Journal today. It's one of my favourites. The paper is not too thick, not too thin, so it's good for a lot of different things. So to start with, all you really need to do is draw around your template and add the little wedges. Now I've drawn my wedges, or printed my wedges, so that they're all the same size, so I can very easily line them up on my page. Now I don't really need those drawn marks, so the next thing I'm going to do is rub them out. Now you can see the gorgeous colours from Lindy's that I'm playing with. So I've got an orange creamsicle flat fabio, so no sparkle. I have Sandra D sepia flat fabio, again no sparkle. Uh, I have a moonshadow mist, which means it's a vintage tone, and this one's golden doubloons and a beautiful golden sparkle. I have a starburst, and this one's delphinium turquoise, one of my favourites. And lucky last, another starburst, which means it's sparkly, and this one's Cathedral Pines Green. Now this set was from September, and I had a ball making a really simple journal page just to show off the colours and how they look over the top of each other. So start by rubbing out that circle. You just want the faintest lines. You just need to be able to see them, um, but you don't really need to use them. Now I'm going to use that circle template and some black gesso and just add a very rough circle to my page. Now I could leave this scruffy or fill it in. I've kind of chosen to do a little bit of both, so I was playing a little bit here. It's kind of what pages are about, isn't it? At this point, I've wiped a little bit off the of I've wiped a little bit of paint off my brush, and I'm just adding some scruffy lines, so it's not quite so perfect. Dry this with a heat tool, just so that it's not going to mess up and blend with any of those gorgeous Lindy's colours. And then wet just one wedge at a time with a water brush. Now this will allow you to keep the Lindy's colours exactly within that wedge and also get a little bit of colour, var colour variation on your project. So just something a little bit different. Now I really enjoy doing this because you never quite know what it's going to look like. So I'm going to start with golden doubloons and I'm just dipping a paintbrush right into the bottom of the bottle and tapping that onto my pre-wet circle. And you can add as much of this colour or as little as you like, but for me being a product test page, I want to see what this can do. So in the wedges, I'm adding it at what I call full strength. So as much colour as I can, just to see what it looks like when you really ramp up the colour on the page. And then I'm going to do sort of like a little tail washing off the side, but I'm going to make this as light as I can in some areas. I'd like to see what it looks like when the colour's washed out, when there's lots of water added to it, and when you add droplets over the top. So that's what this page is going to be. Those inner wedges will be the strongest colour I can get, and then I'll sort of do a few other things on the outside. Now make sure you've cleaned off your brush really well between colours. You don't want any mixing if you can avoid it, because you're aiming to see what the colours look like individually. So I'm painting the next wedge, uh, on the opposite side of my circle and this one I'm going to be colouring with the Cathedral Pines Green. Now I'm going to follow the same process. So I'm going to dip my brush into the bottle and make that wedge in the circle as dark as dark as can be because I'd like to see how much shimmer, what depth of colour I can get and how it looks. And then I'm going to rinse off my brush and sort of just drag the colour out into the surrounding area so you can see what it looks like when you've got um, some of it mixed with water, when you allow the colour to bleed into each other. Have a play. Just sort of see what it can do. That's what product test pages are for me. Now I'm going to dry both of these off so that I don't make a mess and spread a bit of that colour out with my paintbrush before moving on to the next colours. Now I'm going to use orange creamsicle next. Now this one's a flat Fabio, so you don't expect it to have any shimmer. And I know this one has a bit of... Um, Oh, I want to say white powder, but that's not quite right. So it's got sort of like a, a base colour of white in here to make it pastel. So 
I don't know, I might see some differences from the starbursts over the black. Maybe not. So this is where we find out. It's, it's just fun to play. Um, so once I'm finished with the orange creamsicle, I'm going to move on to the delphinium turquoise. Now you can see it's reactivated a little tiny bit of that moon shadow mist. It's not really going to matter. It's not very much. So painting again the wedge with the water brush. And you can add as much or as little water as you like. I'm just adding enough to wet the surface. So this delphinium turquoise is a beautiful, strong color. And I know that from previous projects. And it's also really vibrant on the shimmer. So I'm really interested to see what this will look like when I'm finished. Again, blending it out onto the edges, go as light as you can, add a bit of sort of like letting it bleed. Have a play. I love seeing how different this looks depending on what you do with it. And you can see it sort of spreading out onto the edges there. Now I'm just going to dry these last two colors before I move on to my third, just to make sure that my colors stay true and don't blend if I can help it. Now, sometimes they do that whether you want them to or not, but I'll give it a good go. And that's what drying with a heat gun does. It'll also give me color pools if I've left enough watery liquid on there. So that's kind of cool too. Now this last one's the Sandra de Sepia, and it's another flat Fabio, but this one, unlike the orange creamsicle, does not have any white to it. So it is a pure uh, dye color, um, which means it stays beautiful and true. Now I love this vintagey brown tone that it makes. It's kind of a warm, almost a velvety brown kind of color. It's really yummy. Now, all of, now that I've got all of those individual colors dry, it's time to see how they play over the top of each other. And to do that, all I'm going to do is flick a little bit of each color over the other colors. And you find some really surprising color combinations this way. Now I have to tell the truth here. Usually I don't do this in a journal page. I'm not always that organized. Often I try out my color combinations on a piece of scrap paper, but some of them turn out too pretty. I don't want to throw them away. So I end up with little piles of scrap paper with color tests. So I thought, why not do it in my journal page? That way I can keep it and refer to it later if I want to. So as you add each color, dry it off with the heat gun because you'll see the intensity of the color one over the other. And you'll also find you get those gorgeous little drying marks if there's a big enough pool of liquid. Now, I probably won't get that on these little spots, but it does help intensify the shimmer and just looks so, so pretty. Now, knowing when to stop is almost as important as knowing when it's not finished. It's a skill I'm still working on. <laughs> so there might be a few too many spots just here, but it's a play page. So that's what it's supposed to be. Something simple and fun. Now, a lot of people ask me, Will the Lindy's reactivate if you add water over the top? So this is an uncoated plain paper page. And I'm just doing a little test to see exactly how much that color reactivates. Now, as you can see, the Sandra D. Sepia has reactivated a little and it has just bled a tiny bit on the edges. But as for the other colors, not very much. Now, they're not supposed to be permanent on paper. And I wouldn't dare say that these are. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot of color movement there on plain, uncoated paper. So have a play, see what happens. Now, I love the shimmer on these. Just that delphinium turquoise over that moon shadow mist is just making my heart beat faster. That is so pretty. And over the orange creamsicle as well. It's gorgeous. Just look at those beautiful spots of shimmer. That's why the Starbursts won my heart years ago and still have it. So how can I resist that beautiful sparkle? Now, it is a journal page, so I'm just gonna do a few things to finish it off, but not very much. So I'm taking some of that same black gesso that I used to create the circle, and I'm just gonna add a word on the bottom. It doesn't need to be anything profound or hugely meaningful. This is just something that I thought would work well on that page, and it just says lovely. I'm using a little short head brush to add the paint, and while I've sped this up, I'm just going slowly so it doesn't creep under the edges of the stencil there. Lift it off, and then all I'm going to do to finish this off is grab, I've got some paint mixture in a little fine liner bottle, and I'm just going to write September around the circle, just for something a little bit different to add an extra element. Now you can barely see it when it's sitting flat, but when I tilt it, 
that's coming up in a second, right here, you can just see the hidden words. And it's only when you look at it from a certain angle, you can even see that. So that's a really cool way to add an additional something to your piece. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick page. I'll be back with more. Bye.